You're in here for a monstrous crime. That, I presume you would agree, it yes. was a monstrous crime. You've always challenged the, the notion that you yourself are a monster. Professionals have said you're a psychopath. How do you categorize yourself? To respond to the question about whether or not I may be a psychopath or a sociopath or whichever phrase you want to use, I want to point out in the most recent edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, psychiatrists and psychologists and other mental health professionals now favor the idea of spectrum. And I'll be the first to agree with you. And yes, I did commit a monstrous crime, but does one mistake define my entire life? And does that one mistake mean that I'm at the extreme end of the spectrum? I don't think it does. He's done his research and he's expecting the question and he has a completely rehearsed answer. Yeah. The subtext of everything he wants to say is designed for his future parole hearing. Exactly. Mom, what's your least favorite word? Mom, what? Your least favorite word. Or I don't know. Your relationship with your mother is very complicated. You know, she's been advised by professionals that she should have nothing more to do with you. She should relocate somewhere where you have no idea where she is, change her name, necessary, and sever all links with you. That that professionally is their advice to her. She's refused to act on that advice and describes what she has for you as unconditional love. What do you make of your mother's decision to stand by you? It, it astounds me, the fact that she can still love me and the fact that she still cares for me and stands by me. It astounds me every day. You have an IQ of 141, which is pretty well genius level. That would make you an exceptional intellect for people who are normally in prison. One of the things most people say when they serve a lot of time is just how boring and repetitive, mundane the life is. How do you deal with that? Uh, books. I am a voracious reader. I'm always reading. And What are you reading at the moment? Well, I'm reading several things at the moment right now. I am reading a collection of horror stories edited by Mark Morris, and I am reading the newest issue of Black Static, a zine published in the UK. People might be surprised that you read horror stories, given you live through a horror story. I enjoy reading horror and dark fiction because it can be hard for me to read novels about mundane life and mundane concerns. When I read a horror story, it's almost soothing in a way because I find myself, it's almost like I'm touching the mind of the writer, someone who understands who has either been in a dark place, him or herself, or has seen that place and is able to express it or articulate it in a way that I feel I can't. For him, as a psychopath, he needs that thrill. He needs the excitement, and he's not getting it here. Right. And that's, my, that's a, my concern, is when he gets out, that it will no longer be mundane. He'll be able to exercise the things that excite him. Right, and the only thing that he finds his word soothing is horror. Yeah. Soothing, because it, it was reassuring to him that somebody else has a dark mind like his that can write about horrible stuff like he's done. He doesn't feel so alone or aberrant in this world. Absolutely. Because if, if somebody else can think it and write it into a novel, then he's not weird. He's fine. Hey, Paris, what is your problem? 